The Bishop Catholic Diocese of Sokoto, Bishop Matthew Hassan Kuka, says President Muhammad Buhari will be leaving Nigerians far more vulnerable than when he assumed office on the 29th of May 2015, despite his many promises. The cleric stated this in his 2022 Christmas message, saying that he has no doubt that the health of the president had improved in the last seven and a half years, but wished that millions of Nigerians enjoy a fraction of Buhari's enhanced health through access to better health care services in the country. Bishop Kuka noted that the corruption and the president, uh, the corruption the president came into fight has become the order of the day, which signals a government marked by nepotism. He, however, recommended the president for the efforts made in the area of infrastructure and in seeking to end malfeasance in the electoral processes. On the 2023 general elections, the cleric can join the president to hold INEC accountable to ensure a free fair and credible exercise and um, many people would argue that Bishop Kuka's voice is basically speaking the thoughts of many 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 people it's not the first time he's always been critical of the current administration you know and there's many times I, I think at this point Bishop Kuka should be used to it you know where he has been you know attacked by the APC um, or, you know, fans of the current administration. He, he should be used to it by now. But every other four market days, he, pu he puts out, you know, a message to the current yeah. administration and always would share his thoughts um, about them. And you would also, you would understand where he's coming from. Um, I spoke about this earlier, that when you, when you, earlier when we were talking about the president and his plans to retire to Daura, and, um, you know, not be concerned about Asorok or, or whatnot after he, he leaves office. And I was saying earlier that for me, in a sane society, those aren't the type of news stories that I want to share when four, three, four days ago, more than 40 people were slaughtered in a state in the same country. That the same president is talking about what he wants to do after retirement has not been able to get himself to visit those people. I mean, he's barely visited anybody that has been affected by uh, by uh, these these uh, uh, terror attacks in the last couple of last eight years. So the same president has not been able to bring himself to do that, and it really has just shown and had, will continue to show how insensitive the the government is to the lives and property of Nigerian citizens. So when you ask, if you would ask President Mohamed Buhari, his views on how successful his government is, I'm not sure what the argument will be. I'm not sure what points that they will be able to put forward. And it's not saying that it has been completely useless, even if some people would say that. But there is just so many statistics and so many indices that show that the government has been has been woeful. We currently, and you, everyone who continues to bring in Russia, Ukraine, or bring in COVID-19 is honestly just living in denial. Um, if you want to blame those factors for uh, the economic wars that Nigeria is currently right. facing or has been facing, people can't afford to eat this Christmas. And Ella, I said that this was, for me, and from what I saw, the least Merry Christmas the Nigerians have had in a, in a while. People can't afford to eat. Gary is no longer the, you know, the food for the poor man. It's not even affordable for, for the poor man. Yes. A I bag mean, of that's... rice is 50,000 Naira. And these are the same bags of rice that were 8,000 Naira to 13,000 Naira in 2014 when the current administration took over. A loaf of bread is now a thousand naira on the average, seven hundred naira to a thousand naira on the average. There's so many things, Osaugi. It's even very expensive for one to see one's period, and, and this is as a woman who has a good job, right? Uh, there are, uh, and you're thinking of the more vulnerable ones in the society. So there's so many layers to uncover. Now, while some people are of the opinion that as a, a, a cleric he shouldn't be involved, you know, there have been conversations about not mixing religion and politics and how the church or, you know, the, the religious leaders need not be involving themselves in political conversations. Bishop Kuka has been very vocal, like you mentioned, very vocal about things that he, he needed to see being done properly. And in his messages, I mean, it was his last Christmas message was something similar, um, Easter homily. There have been even threats on his life. There have been reports that there have been threats on his life with people asking him to stay out of you know, politics and governance. But he's also been a very important and involved part in some of the key changes that have been effected in the country. He, you know, he was he, he was part of the delegates, you know, the delegation that ensured that the peace accord was signed between uh, President Muhammad Buhari and former uh, Good Luck Billy Jonathan. He's been very involved. He's 
spoken so brazenly. So I think we've moved past the area where we'd say to uh, religious leaders, do not talk about what's happening in the church, especially when they have a lot of, they're directly involved, their members are involved, the church members are involved in what's going on. So I think yeah. we've sort of moved <clears throat> away from that area. So, so um, you know, of course, for um, everyone, Bishop uh, Matthew Kuka is the Bishop of uh, Sokoto Diocese um, in Northern Nigeria. I don't even agree with the narrative of don't get involved in politics. I think that is a, that has been a way or a method of shutting up government critics. It's the same way every now and then you hear, you know, in response, because I did radio for a while, and every now and then when I make complaints about, you know, wh the way government has failed, someone might call the radio station and say, you're the, you know, radio presenter, don't, you know, be, don't take sides. But it's a way of shutting down government critics. Bishop Matthew Kuka is not playing politics. He's not taking sides with political parties. He's, he's not joining political parties. It's not a, an attack on President Muhammad Buhari's He's character. simply giving his analysis on how the government has been run. And it, millions, at least 100 million, 133 million um, poor Nigerians um, you know, would say the same thing. So he's not playing politics. He's simply speaking on behalf of the people that he's, of course, uh, supposedly he's representing in the Christian um, faith. And so um, I agree with Bishop Kuka, um, and I'm sure that a lot more people also agree with him, that Nigeria at, at its current state is not what a lot of people would have wished that it would be. But of course, we'll continue to push and we'll continue to do what is necessary to ensure that we have a united, a peaceful, and a country that continues to grow.